welcome to the committee of conference um, for S54. Um, so I thought that the first thing we would do is run through the House's counter proposal um, to the Senate's proposal. Um, and Michelle will we'll do a walkthrough with that, but I'm sure uh, members of the House um, Conference Committee will have comments on various sections um, of our proposal or counter proposal. Michelle. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So um, everyone should have a copy of the proposal. So at the top, it says differences between Senate and House versions of S54, House counter to Senate counter, and it's dated today. So I believe that that's up on the web for anybody who's following along, and that also that Andrea emailed it out to everybody. Um, so what I did is I just added a fourth column here so that you can see still see the Senate's original and the House's original, what the Senate conceded and proposed last time, and then the House's response to that. Um, and I uh, also, I just highlighted in yellow, because this is, it's we're up to 34 pages now on the side-by-side, -side, I, you know, it's a little hard to, for everybody to be scrolling through. So I did just highlight in yellow kind of the things where there's still not agreement. So you can kind of, we can kind of skip to those. So I'm not gonna spend any time on things that are not new to this conversation. So, um, but have me back up if, if you feel like I skip over something and you aren't clear about it. Um, so the first one is the regulatory authority. And at the, uh, the last meeting, the Senate had proposed um, that they would agree with the House's proposal with regard to the board structure and appointed by the governor with the nominating committee. Um, and the Senate agreed to that on the condition that the Senate would uh, then confirm the members of the board and the House agrees to uh, that Senate proposal. Um, so moving down to the next change, if you look at top of page two, and uh, this is uh, with re on the issue of the medical registry uh, and the, the regulation of the dispensaries moving from the Department of Public Safety over under the board, um, not immediately, but once the board adopts regulations for the medical program, um, it would shift over. That was in the Senate proposal and the House does agree to that proposal. Um, I just put a little note there that the dates will obviously need to change. And that's, I think something we're waiting to take a look at um, comprehensively of what the timeline, so how all the dates change throughout the whole thing, if once you kind of come to an agreement on all the other issues, but I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about medical when we get down to some of the details. Right, and I'll just note that I think this is a significant concession by the House. Um, Thank you. So the, so the next change, we're going to skip through a few pages because the Senate had on those other issues agreed to the House proposal. So we are going to move all the way down to, and I will say on page nine, this is part of the, the medical report. I don't have report. page numbers on mine, so could you just say what the heading is, please? Okay. Um, I'm wondering why you have a different version than I do. Um, I opened the Word document. I didn't open it in Word, I guess that's why. I, I don't okay. have page numbers either. Up yeah. in the right-hand corner, there's no page number? Nope. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, there is in the Word. When I opened it in Word, there's a page number. Yep. Okay. It might, I just, if you can open it that way, it's probably better just be, since it is a long document, but... Um, I'll try to navigate. You're on page nine, you said? Yeah. Okay. And this is just about, um, about uh, rulemaking with the board. And this is, I just wanted to know, this is related to the medical and that is around, yep. um, around the criminal history records and doing the check on the medical uh, dispensary uh, owners and financiers and employees in the same way that uh, you would do it for the uh, for the commercial cannabis establishments. Okay. Then on the next page, um, which if you have numbers, it's page ten. 
um, uh, I had added in in the blue there from the Senate's proposal last time, they had raised the issue of the cannabis expungement, which was uh, moving along in S-294 as passed by the Senate. Um, the House Judiciary Committee has uh, taken extensive testimony on that, and they have agreed to a version that is now in S-234. So it's, uh, people, uh, it's understandable people get them a little confused because there's only one number difference there. But S-234 is the miscellaneous judiciary bill. And, um, and House Judiciary, I think just um, since in the last maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, has voted that out or was planning to vote that out. And it does include the cannabis expungement language. And I went over that language with Senate Judiciary yesterday. So the next issue is on local control. There is not agreement on that. So um, both bodies are still sticking with their original proposals on that issue um, to, right now. So I know there are concerns raised about the House proposal would somehow hamper cannabis businesses, but you know I have to disagree. Um, first of all, our proposal only impacts retail licensees. It ensures that other types of licensees can do business and it helps ensure a reduction in the illicit market by allowing illicit cannabis cultivators and others to enter the legal market. In the Senate version of local control, towns may prohibit all types of licensees and therefore eliminate the chance for many illicit cannabis growers and others to enter the legal market. Dick, can I ask a question? Sure. Sir, um, Yes. John, you're an attorney. I am. A prospective retailer comes to you and says, I would like to open up a retail establishment in Vermont. Where are you going to advise them to go? To a town that's approved retail cannabis. But no town has. Well, you know, Joe, this has worked very effectively. And I'll give you an example. Um, communication union districts. In, in the statute with respect to that, not one town, but three towns have to opt in to create a communi communication union district. And we've had a proliferation of CUDs around the state. It has not hampered them. It is not going to hamper cannabis businesses. That was well, there any conversation on your side about having all towns vote on this issue in March? Have we had that conversation? Yeah. Um, we have not. Rob, you have something? Well, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, the, the other part of this is by having the, the opt-in, um, a couple things. One, you'll notice that there's communities already that have voted to not allow a retail establishments and from our perspective and i will say from mine as somebody who's been involved in different businesses over the years um, if i was inclined to do something like this i would want to go to a community who has worked towards allowing this and putting the things in place that, that need to so that it would give me some predictability whether it be local zoning and plus the reality of it is here is it's going to be a while here before communities know what the rules of the road are going to be because no matter what version we wind up here, there's going to be uh, some extensive rulemaking. And right. this way, it yeah. does give the communities and those that are interested an idea of just exactly what they're going to be dealing with. My, my, um, if I could, John, um, sure. my suggestion is we let Michelle continue to walk through and then we can argue out different places where we're apart, at least we'll know where we're apart by the time she finishes. That's fine. And what we've all agreed to. Okay. Um, I think it's easier to, to make offers, counter offers and other offers when you know what you're actually apart on. Okay, so I'll keep working through. Um, on, again, on page 10, so local control, there's the issue of the opt-in and the opt-out. Um, there is also the issue uh, of the board um, collecting uh, local license fees 
but at the state level that would then be redistributed back to those towns that have some type of cannabis establishment. So the house's proposal originally and um, and there has been uh, no uh, no movement on that. And so that's still that's obviously tied with uh, with the tax issue and also with the local issue. Next on the next page, page 11, advertising. Uh, so the Senate had a proposal on advertising restrictions. The House had uh, passed a ban on all advertising. The Senate came back and proposed adopting the advertising language that was voted out of the House Government Operations Committee prior to being amended on the House floor. Um, the House does not agree with that, with that proposal. Moving on to page 12 and prohibited products. Um, the, there's still not agreement on the prohibited products. So you can read that and see that yourself. Um, there is uh, one issue that there has been some movement on and that is at the bottom of that page, page 13. Um, the house had the health warnings um, that are throughout the chapter being um, developed by the Department of Health and then the board would adopt it. And then the Senate proposed that the health warnings are developed by the board in consultation with the Department of Health and then adopted by rule and the House agrees to that. Then I'm gonna move down a ways because um, there had been agreement on a lot of those issues beforehand. So page 18, um, and this is on the excise tax. So recall that uh, Senate proposal had a 16% excise tax, um, everything going to the general fund. House proposed a 14% excise tax. Um, and uh, the Senate uh, came back last week and proposed uh, a 14% excise tax on retail sale of cannabis and cannabis products, uh, and but provided that 2% out of the 14% uh, was gonna be designated for municipalities that have a licensed cannabis establishment and then it would be redistrib redistributed back to those towns based on a formula that's adopted by the General Assembly after the board recommends something to the General Assembly and the house does not agree to that. Next, uh, related to that is uh, with regard to the, the spending of the excise monies, uh, the Senate had it going to all to the general fund, House had it going 30% uh, dedicated to substance uh, misuse prevention programming as recommended by the Oversight and Advisory Council with the remaining monies going to the general fund. Then the Senate proposed a counter, which was that 30% would go for substance misuse prevention programming, um, but it would be up to the legislature to determine where that that was going. They didn't have to necessarily follow any recommendations from the, um, from the advisory council, and they wanted a cap of $10 million on that 30%, and the House agrees to that proposal. No changes on the sales tax because the House had proposed a sales tax and the Senate agreed last time. Then I'm gonna move down to page 23. Um, this is on the local license fees to be charged and collected by the board, which we've already mentioned. So there's not agreement on that. So now I'm going to move down to page 27 for medical marijuana. And I added, this is kind of a new box because before I didn't go through and um, compare the two with regard to the medical because the house's uh, version didn't contain anything with regard to medical program at all. And so I've added this new box here. So you recall that in the Senate version that was passed last year, um, it repealed the existing uh, medical cannabis statutes that are in Title 18 at a future date um, and then directs the board to adopt new regulations at the same time they're doing it for the for the cannabis establishments for the adult use market and then at a certain date the 
um, the medical program would move over from the Department of Public Safety under the board and would operate under those new rules and statutes um, and be uh, governed by the board. Um, the House did not have any of that in its proposal that passed the body. Um, and so what the House is proposing now is that they would agree with the Senate version um, of the medical marijuana laws with the following changes. And you'll see at the bottom of that page, page 27, um, the first is that it would require the board to act on applications for patients or caregiver cards within 30 days of receiving an application. That's something that is in the current law that was not in um, the, uh, the Senate version. It would all, they would also ask that they require caregiver applicants to submit fingerprints and have a criminal background check to prior to being able to be a caregiver for someone who is on the medical registry. Um, and that to disqualifying crimes for a caregiver would include abuse of a vulnerable adult or abuse of a child. So if someone had anything on their record for those types of crimes, they would not be able to get a caregiver card under the medical program. The next one uh, is patients would only be able to possess two ounces of cannabis. Um, that is the current law for medical patients. Um, the Senate version that passed in 2019 uh, increased that from two to three ounces. Can I ask you a question, if you don't sure. mind? The proposal above regarding the um, medical card for people who have a record, denying the card if they have a record, uh, they can still buy legally in a store if that's in a retail outlet, if it's approved, right? There would be no requirements for them so, to buy at a retail store, no. And currently, we so okay just so i'm clear there's no yeah they just wouldn't get a medical card and they would they would then have to pay the taxes whatever taxes and fees are assessed right and that's the for, product right and that's for the caregiver not for the patient but they there would be um the if someone wanted to be a caregiver, so they would be going to the dispensary for the person or they would be growing the plants for the patient. If okay. they wanted to do that, then they would have to have the fingerprint supported criminal background check. Yeah, understood. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. Um, the next one, so we just talked about the two versus the three ounces. Uh, next one is that uh, requiring that cannabis and cannabis products would be labeled in the same way for medical that they would be for under the adult use market, according to the labeling standards that you've already agreed to for the adult use market. So you'd have consistency between the two. Um, they, the House is also proposing that advertising um, for uh, dispensaries would be banned, um, just like what they are advocating for with regard to the adult use market. And, uh, and finally, that no new dispensaries would be allowed. So there's five currently. Um, if the medical uh, registry reaches 7,000, there can be a six license, but I, I, I don't think that that has, has happened. Um, and so the, you, no new dispensaries would be allowed unless a town opts in in the same manner for retail as in the house proposal. But so but those some, five, we do sorry. allow satellites. Are, are you? Yes, are you but I'm just talking the, about the licenses. So, okay. So you're still okay. allowing the satellites of the licenses, whatever we currently allow. Right. And any, any dispensary that is currently licensed uh, couldn't then like a, a town couldn't then boot them out under this proposal. It's just that there couldn't be because the Senate proposal allows the board to determine the number of dispensary licenses. And uh, so if you merge those two together, it would just be that if there was going to be a new dispensary, um, you know, maybe you're up in the Northeast Kingdom or something like that, that the town would have to opt in in the same way well, that. I, I did, uh, I I just didn't want any confusion. I didn't want to be confused about you still allowing the satellites that are already established. Yes. Yep. Okay. 
Um, okay, that is it for the for the general for the medical and the registry. Um, other than we go down to the next box for existing licensed medical dispensaries. And, um, and again, this is just part of what we've already talked about the house agreeing to, to move the medical program over under DPS and to continue the medical program under the board. So they are agreeing to that. And then that's, this takes us down to page 31 in highway safety. Um, so the short answer uh. is, is that there is still disagreement on saliva. Uh, evidentiary tests and seat belts. Um, so there has that has not changed. Um, and then I'll take you to there is a new proposal. If you look at top of page 34, um, the House is proposing amending the existing language in Title 23 on open container. So remember, you have an open container law. One, one statute is for uh, motor vehicle operators. The other one is for passengers and it provides for uh, civil penalties for um, having an open, either consuming or having an open container of either alcohol or cannabis in a motor vehicle. And the house is proposing striking the word open in both of those statutes so that it would read that um, the penalty is for having a container of either alcohol or cannabis in the passenger area of the motor vehicle. And so essentially it would either, if you did have those things, so if you're, you would have to either keep it in a locked glove box, has to be locked or it doesn't count or it has to be in the trunk. Could I get a ruling from um, Bloomer or McGill or anyone? Uh, is it acceptable to add things that were neither were in neither version to a uh, conference committee report? It would then allow somebody on the floor of either the House or Senate, I believe, to suggest that this wasn't a proper uh, conference committee report because we agreed to things that weren't in either bill. I'll follow up with some uh, uh, Secretary Bloomer. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, the House would probably prefer to hear from. Uh, so I, I would suggest that both um, on that. I'm just concerned that we go through all the work. We come to an agreement and then it gets to the floor and there's something added that wasn't in either version. As you know, there are still proponents to this bill. Uh, Joe and then Jeanette. So Michelle, I just want to make sure I've got this straight. Tonight is date night with my wife. I go to White Market and I buy a bottle of wine and it's sitting in the passenger seat next to me. I get pulled over for my license plate light is out and the cop sees the bottle of wine on its way home for date night. You're suggesting in this language now that we are subjecting ourselves to arrest? No, it's a civil offense, but you would be subject. So to I would be subject to the Judicial Bureau in having some action filed against me now yes okay thanks Jeanette my question was similar so I go to the grocery store and I pick up my groceries and I have a bottle of wine in my grocery bag I don't have a trunk in my car so and it doesn't fit in the glove compartment because it's a skinny little glove compartment. So you're saying that I can't go to the grocery store and buy a bottle of wine. Is that the case here? Are you asking me if I'm telling you you can't buy a bottle of wine? I mean, is that, <laughs> is that what this means? Um, no, I'm not asking you to justify yeah. it. Is that, is let, that what this is maybe, saying? Let me, let me read to you the existing language on passenger area. Oh, wait a minute. I, think, I, I don't want to argue over Okay. Something until we find out if it's if it's even okay. allowable into the process. Okay. And we've got enough well, things to argue about. And I don't understand, you know, this would be like me adding in the expungement. Or uh, frankly, helmets. Uh, while it might be germane. All right, we will check. I'm ready. I'm ready for that helmet bill. Um, I won't support that either, Joe. So you need to get 
two votes uh, on both sides. <laughs> I can just say, if, if I could just answer one thing for Jeanette, which is that the, the current law does say if you don't have a trunk and talks about how you've got to, where it's got to be in your car if yeah. you don't have a trunk, so. Yeah, we spent a lot of time on trunks. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think it has right. to be, it, it, it can't be reached by the driver, as I remember or I recall. I believe that's the right. Way. It has to, yeah, it has to exclude the area behind the last upright seat or any area not normally occupied by the operator or any passenger. So I'm not, you know, there's got to be, yeah. So, okay. And that's it for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is really helpful. I appreciate it. Um, shows us where we're still apart. Yes. We have I'll, have, I'll have to say, I like Michelle's highlighting in yellow, but putting in red where we disagree. Um, we still have a, a proposal regarding the current use situation. And I believe, um, do you have that, Michelle, or Michael O'Grady, or somebody? Uh, I have it. Uh, I sent it to you, Senator Sears. I have not sent it out to the rest of the conferees. Oh, gosh. That's my fault. Uh, I can send it to Andrea right now, if you would like. Could you please? Because I just completely... Um, um, so basically, the proposal is to... Uh, um, to provide that the cultivation of cannabis on agricultural land and the use of farm buildings to dry or process that cannabis would not disqualify the land or buildings from use value appraisal or constitute development under current use if the ag land or farm building was enrolled in use value at the time cannabis cultivation commenced cannabis is cultivated on one acre or less of agricultural land and all other requirements under current use would continue to be met. So the concept is you're not losing any property tax value. It's still subject to sales tax, et cetera, still subject to environmental regulation, but it will allow that land to remain or that parcel of the land to remain in current use for cannabis cultivation. I'm still trying to find the document. I, uh, I just sent it to Andrea. I will send it to each of you independently. Thank you. This is Andrea. I haven't received it yet. I take that back. It just arrived. I now have it. I have it too. Michael, how does this differ from what's in the, in the House version of S54, just so I understand? So in the House version, you have provided that uh, cannabis establishments shall not be regulated as farming. Right. Uh, and shall not uh, qualify as an agricultural product or agricultural crop for the purposes of use value. 
So this provides that the cultivation of cannabis on already enrolled use value land continues to be enrolled. Janet? Um, so this doesn't need to be with the same uh, owner who enrolled it in current use, right? At the way it's written. I could, I could sell my current use acre to uh, what would be frankly a large cultivator, right? Not a small one. Um, and they would be able to keep that in current use. Is that correct? Yes, because current use does allow for transfer. Yeah, I, I, can, uh, I mean, that, that, that seems problematic to me. Well, it's a proposal from the Senate. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. I hope you'll mm -hmm. consider it just as we've considered yep. many of your proposals and have come to compromise in the middle. Was um, it the Senate um, Senate's intention to allow that current use enrollment to go from one owner to another? I don't think it was ever discussed. No, I don't with think the, we with discussed the conferees. That. I the, think this Senate, is the first time it came up. There's also, I'm sorry. Michael, go ahead. I don't believe it was ever discussed by, by the conferees. I think this is the first time that that transfer issue was raised. Yeah. I, I think we did talk about it um, being under the same ownership or the same family or that it couldn't be sold to. We didn't come to any decision about how to word that, but we did have a little discussion about it. Dick, do you want to have us meet separately? I wonder, we... well, I, is there anything else, John? No, that, that is our kind of proposal. And we now have your um, proposal. With well, I mean, to... I, you haven't moved an inch on seatbelts. And until seatbelts move, there's no point in us meeting. Well, it's something we I mean, why waste our time? To discuss. I understand that to the speaker, it's very important that um, seat belts are in there. Um, and I understand that there's several other provisions that are important to other members of the powerful members of the house. Um, and we're fine to try to compromise on them, but there is no compromise on seat belts. So if it's either out or there's no point in us continuing to discuss. And we're down to it. I mean, I think we can come to some agreements on uh, many of the provisions here. Um, would it would it be appropriate to circle back to those and 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 see? I, I I'm not. I, I guess I could put the question another way. What what does the house want for seatbelts? Or is the house unwilling to move on seatbelts? And if that's the case, then what's the point in keeping going? Dick, if I can just add, seatbelts is an issue that has now been exacerbated in my eyes by the additional proposal that's been presented. And I know we need a ruling from somebody on whether or not that additional proposal can be made but you are essentially adding on to the ability of a police officer to stop and intervene um, individuals who are in automobiles and in the middle of the Black Lives Movement conversations we are having, to me, that is just an absolute wrong way to go. And I, I can't wait to see how the press is gonna to react to that. Um, I don't know where that idea came from, but it is very troubling for me 
And I'm, a, I'm really having a hard time with that. And I can't stress that enough. Could I suggest we go to our breakout rooms potentially? Yes. I'd like to Sounds like a great room. idea, Ron. Always one with great ideas. He is. <laughs> I will remember, remind, though, it is date night, so I'm, I'm hoping we get out on time. I, I'm out of here at 4.30. I have to be. I have a date with Senator Campion to go do some campaigning. Do you have wa enough wine at home, Joe? My, my <laughs> date is better than yours, Dick, and yes, Rob, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yours is better. Um, <clears throat> I just thought I'd add that. Right. <laughs> Need anyone in our breakout breakout room? I mean, do we want to? I don't think so. Okay. So no staff. Everybody's good. Nobody needs any staff. Nick, you're muted. All right. I would like Michael Grady, um, but if you want, if you don't want Michelle, we'll take her. Well, I'm not sure if we quite feel that way. Um, <laughs> No offense. Um, could could I Michael really, I, could Michael potentially check in with us before? Why um, don't you Why don't you take Michael first, and we'll take Michelle, and then switch? Okay. And, uh, okay. That work. That'd be great. Yep. Yep. Good idea. Okay. Thank you. So we just mute everything and stop our video, right? And we automatically go. Yep. Can I also just ask if it's okay? So I think we have Abby and Anthea who have been working on the tax stuff. Is it helpful if, if one goes to each breakout room? Sure. Okay. Never. All right. So are we live, Andrea, or? Yes, you are live. Uh, John, we have a counter proposal if you'd like. I thought, uh, all right, we'll, we'll listen to it. Well, I mean, let's. All right. So, I mean, I, 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 this was extremely helpful to us to have Michelle go through a um, through the differences, and you know, it, again, I'll say it's surprising how um, near we are yet so far apart. So, we think um, we would give the house. The following items in return the house would give us the following items and michelle can make it clearer for me wherever I, i'm just kind of talking in general terms so okay we would um give you the uh, your opt-in position we would give you your uh, prohibited items position we would give you the modified current use which is uh, no transfer um, and we would give you saliva and advertising at your position of none. We believe that it probably will end up in the courts. Um, and we think it's, it, but we realize that you're having difficulty moving from your position. And so we would do that. Uh, in return, we want the 2% local option tax seat belts and uh, remove the state assessed local fees and uh, removing the open container that was added today on um, those provisions that were added today. Um, and that would get us to an agreement. Uh, if you were able to, to do that, you may wanna take some time, think about it. Um, and Michelle can do it more formally. Um, but that is where we're at. We think that this is very reasonable. And uh, no, anyway, that's where we're at. OK. Um, it, it, Dick us, is all right if we take move. Um, We'd like to take a brief breakout um, just to discuss whether our, that position that you proposed. OK, um, that's fine. Um, what time do you want to come back? Because that seriously, we do need to be out of here by four thirty. Four fifteen. Okay.
Does the Senate want to go to a breakup room? I think muted. that's probably the, uh, the easiest. Muted Senator White and Senator Benning. What do you want to do? I don't have any reason to go anywhere at the moment. All right. Um, Dick, um, we appreciate yeah. your proposal. Um, and just have two um, modifications to it. Um, one is with respect to the, the use value proposal where um, the no transfer is, is a, a good change. And we would just add that it be limited to small cultivators as already um, described in S54. Um, the other change we want is to keep our tax structure. We I, I think I speak for the committee. We'd be um, happy to keep the uh, after we. I need to consult with my agriculture committee, but I think that the idea of the small cultivator is really what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I don't see how we can um, walk away without some form of local option tax for communities that are willing to host. Their expenses are going to be ongoing, and it's a strong position of the League and League League of Cities and Towns. Um, so I'm not sure. We're very close, um, and we'll certainly consider it over the weekend, and perhaps find some time next week to get together. But I really do think I owe it to the Agriculture Committee to at least hear from them on the use value. Um, Senator White. And then Janet. May I just ask why there is such resistance to allowing the towns to uh, prosper as the state prospers so that they're, if, if revenues go up, they would, they would share in that increased revenue. With the fee structure, they do not share in the increased revenue. And why do we not want our municipalities to share in any increased revenue? Janet? Well, so um, I asked Graham if he would meet with my committee on last Tuesday, I think it was, um, because it was my committee that did the work on the tax structure. And um, he presented the 2% idea. Uh, we had a good discussion about it. Um, my committee raised a number of questions about it, similar to the ones that I've raised here, but I think the crux of it um, is sort of how that money gets redistributed back to municipalities. I think I heard at the meeting that we had on Monday um, that the Senate's idea was that it might go back based on how much licensed activity was in a community, different uh, licenses that were um, granted in a community. Um, I think it would be just as reasonable to uh, distribute it back on the basis of population or on the basis of sales or you know something else. I think it's gonna be very problematic trying to figure that out. Um, and my committee was at least as concerned about it as I am. And they very much reaffirmed the position that we had in the house. Um, the question about, you know, so every time that we hear um, from the municipalities, what they say to us, which I have a lot of sympathy with, is that they are concerned that they're gonna incur costs and they wanna be sure that they're made whole for those costs. And that's what licensing fees do. Um, and they're targeted to the activity. So it might be higher, for example, um, if you have uh, uh, cultivation uh, cultivators in your area or processors, I can't remember, producers, I guess is the right word for them. Um, that might be uh, with higher enforcement costs than retail. We, we just don't know. Um, and there are, there are costs that are um, sort of cross-border. Um, certainly with retail, there are costs that are cross-border. So we feel um, that we developed a, a, a system or a structure 
that would allow us to make communities whole without hurting, uh, you know, because the legislature is going to set the fees rather than the, um, the municipality is not going to set them. We don't think it'll be uh, un inequitable or unfair to the licensed entities. And um, my committee feels really quite strongly about it. So that's. And this was never, never sort of presented to us as sharing in the, um, uh, you know, the, the um, I can't what the word was you used, uh, Jeanette, I'm sorry, I've lost it, but the, it, it's not, a, it, it was never a question of, it was a question of meeting costs as opposed to sharing in the benefits or whatever. And, you know, the, the, municipalities that have a current local option um, are going to get that local option revenue. So there is that um, part of it that yeah. is, is um, not significant. I would suggest, given the hour, um, that um, we, we appreciate your offer. Um, it appears that we're probably extremely close on everything except one issue. No, and maybe I'll reframe well, I think we got two. Well, so we, so if you don't mind if I speak, no. the current use thing is is a problem. Um, but we're willing to give it for the uh, tax structure. We're not willing to give it without that. It is okay. a problem. Okay. Well, what I would like to do is have my have the Senate Agriculture Committee look at the proposal. Luckily, Senator Pearson, who's been working with us, is a member of that is the vice chair of that committee. Fortunately, Senator Pearson is also a member of the Senate Finance Committee, and I'm asking him to go and speak with the Finance Committee about how can we, what is the best way for us to help some of the towns with their concern? Um, and if, it, if we end up feeling like we can get some somewhere, um, whether this fee idea is, is the way to go or what. So I, I'd rather, you know, just as um, I'd rather have a, a few days to, to have them consider these, these two things and um, maybe we can work it out, maybe we can't. But I, don't, I didn't hear you say, Janet, and I just wanna make sure I'm not putting words in your mouth. I didn't say you, I didn't hear you say you were, oppo you were opposed to trying to help the local communities. Oh, we we, their we just felt we were doing it differently and more targeted. Yeah. May, may I just make one comment? I, I think that it is true that we wanted to help them with increased costs that they have. But when we as a state are looking at this, we are not looking at it just as meeting uh, the increased costs we might have. We are looking at it as increased revenue. We are looking at an increased revenue for prevention, for early education programs, and for the general fund. So we are looking at it as increased revenue for the state, and but we refuse to look at it as increased revenue for the municipalities. And I won't say anything more. Well, I just um, respond to that. You know, we do all kinds of economic development in at the state level. Um, and we don't, I mean, the, the tradition in the state, um, frankly, has, has not included this sort of revenue sharing concept. I actually am intrigued by the concept. I think this is the wrong place to start it because of the distribution issues. But um, the reason we've spent a lot of time on it is that I, you know, I actually think there are some interesting ideas about doing some kind of revenue sharing with municipalities, but not in connection specifically with cannabis. So it's um, an interesting idea. I just, it, 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 the distribution of this money out back out to the municipalities is gonna, it would be really, really challenging and to figure out what's a fair way to, to send the money back out. Just as your um, taxing policy came from your Ways and Means Committee, ours came from our Finance Committee. So sure. um, I'm, I'm asking the Finance Committee to take a look at this issue. Okay. Um, and uh, hopefully we can report back to you yeah. middle of next week. Great. Good. Uh, but I, I appreciate the progress that we've made thus far. Um, 
given that <clears throat> I don't want Michelle to waste her time, but at the same time, given that um, we've only got a few issues outstanding, would it make sense for Michelle to begin next week drafting a, a, um, a bill? I think that because we sense. need to get permission from if should we reach agreement on these, we need to get permission from is it joint rules? Yes, it's joint rules. Okay. Before we can sign a, a conference committee report. Well, I'd hate to have us get to an agreement and then find ourselves we we don't <laughs> have enough time to get it through the session. Michelle, you, you raise your hand. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody that there is this other issue that y'all need to tackle, which is the timing of everything. Because with the delay, um, it's uh, I think everybody needs to take another look at a timeline, what it would what it would mean. Because there's a lot of things like when it was going to pass in June, or if it was going to pass in June, uh, that would have allowed for a gear up for reporting back to the legislature, for legislature to take action on fees and various things. And I think that the whole committee needs to look at and be able to walk through what a potential timeline would, would look like so that you can give, so I can make sure that you're in agreement and you can give me clear direction about how I change everything throughout. And so in terms of um, meeting next week to, to discuss the couple outstanding issues, I would just say if you can also plan to talk about the timing of everything so that I can have clear guidance about moving forward and developing a report. Janet? So I have to confess that I can't follow the timelines that you've given us, they're so complicated. My preference would be that the timeline should get us moving as quickly as we can, um, whatever that is. And so um, I don't know that I have much to add to a discussion about specific dates other than to say, let's do it as quickly as we can do it. I, I just wanted to totally agree with Janet. <laughs> I, I, I think that's the really the, I think we're all, um, we want to be realistic in terms of a timeline, um, but I, I think we should move as soon as possible. So one yeah, of the no, things, I, yeah, go ahead. But. I was just gonna say one of the things that is concerning is around um, because there's so much for the board to report back to the General Assembly on <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and they will under this scenario uh, and timing, they probably at the, at the earliest wouldn't be seated until uh, until January. And so uh, they have to come back to you with fee recommendations and a whole slew of uh, many, many things. And I, I just don't know, uh, you know, so I would say, you know, I just for the purposes of discussion on the timeline that I sent you last week, or um, I put in there reporting back to you on April 1st, but I, I realize I mean, I mean, I know everything is kind of up in the air with COVID and, and how long will the session uh, last, but I'm, I'm fine to go ahead and just proceed with stuff like that. But I just want to let you know, there's kind of some tricky points in there that um, I just want to make sure that you're aware of and, and are, are making a, a choice around that policy for those dates. So appreciate that. I think if you can do that in consultation with the vice chair of government operations in the house and the chair of government operations in the Senate, it might be helpful. Because I, I mean, that's where usually we deal with those things, right? Sure. Does that fine with you, Jax? No. Is it too simplistic to just suggest that reports, the dates for reports simply be extended six months? I think that some you can parse out that aren't as, you know, that you can bump out that they don't, that you won't need that information so quickly and then other ones you can. And so if it's, if, if you're authorizing me to make some suggestions and come up with that proposal, I'll certainly do that. Um, you know, but I just need to be looking at the timing of everything from like how long rulemaking takes to how long it takes to get the board seated and the nominating committee and hiring staff and things like that. And then I can just tell you why I suggested what I have.
that good? Okay. That sounds good to me. When you, you want to try to get together, let me see, let me get in touch with Senator Cummings and see what her schedule's like and, um, okay. and Senator Pearson and um, Senator Starr. And I'll get back to you, John, if that's okay. That would be great, Dick. Thank you. We're going to have some longer floor sessions next week is my understanding. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, um, now we're all zoomed out. I would like to say I'm going to go back home, but I'm going to head for home, but I am. Have a great Labor Day weekend, everybody. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank everybody. you very much. Good weekend.